metaphor, uh, literally. <laughs> um, okay, putting, putting KDE on devices, fixing bugs, being be very persistent, yep. Being translated in all the languages, yep, yep. Any other ideas? Reaching outside our bubble, yep. Increasing accessibility. Aggressively targeting enterprise use cases. Good. <laughs> These are, all, these are all great ideas. I'm going to say that there's a, um, another uh, abstraction to all that. We need organization, right? To achieve all of what we just talked about, we need good organization. This is taking the metaphor of uh, domination and war, which I don't necessarily like to use, but I, let's, let's go with it. Um, this is a quote from Sun Tzu from The Art of War from you know, over 2,000 years ago. Um, where uh, it's written, management of many is the same as management of few, right? It is a matter of organization. To do all of what we just talked about, we need organization. And that's going to be my talk today. Um, what, is, uh, what do we mean by organization? What does it require? So we need unifying goals. That's one of the ideas behind having goals voted on every couple of years, to unify the community, to organize them towards certain uh, objectives. We need defined processes, right? That's one of the, one of the goals. Um, there's a, a, a goal of uh, processes um, in KDE right now. And clear communication. So yeah, everyone knows that, that right now um, Nate is on the path towards world domination with good organization by defining um, automated and systematizing internal processes. Um, my talk today is going to be on the step just before maybe you get to that point, which is how do you bring people from the external into the internal so that then they're part of these internal processes, right? And the focus, as you might know from the title, is about the infrastructure. Um, KDE is, is an, maybe an unusual community. We're relatively non-hierarchical. Um, there are sort of many hierarchies, but it's a very distributed uh, uh, group of people. Um, and that makes, in my opinion, infrastructure particularly important, right? Th those are the things that then enable communication and enable people to, uh, to organize. Um, and I'm going to use this um, uh, visualization, um, this idea of, of the process for on-ramping, for making people go from the external into the internal. Um, this is from the Art of Community. Um, and there are four stages that are, that are identified here. Identifying the on-ramp that participants or users know where um, or that they can contribute. Developing knowledge that they learn the, sc the, the, the skill set to contribute. Um, figuring out where they can contribute, determining contributions, and growing kudos. So giving them praise. Now, unsurprisingly, Nate has already already addressed some of these things. Um, this is again from the 2018 talk um, about um, improving the new user contribution process, um, where uh, Nate identifies the problem of not enough resources and um, presents the ideas of uh, uh, reducing difficulty of set, setting up a development environment, improving contributor documentation, increasing promotion and outreach efforts and avoid insulting our users, be positive. Now, if we go back to that plot, these kind of all map onto that same on-ramp. Um, promo and outreach would be identifying the on-ramp, um, reducing de development difficulty in documentation, developing knowledge, um, documentation to some extent, determining contributions, and being positive, you know, growing kudos. Um, so it's nice to see when things align like this. I'm gonna take a slightly different approach here. Um, I'm going to think about this in terms of the infrastructure. Um, so identifying the on-ramp, I'm going to be thinking about it in terms of websites and blogs. That is, where do users get information that might then uh, uh, influence their decision to then become a contributor? Developing knowledge, I'm going to think about wikis. Um, what are the, the documentation um, um, uh, platforms that we have so users can develop the skill set? Um, determining contributions, communication channels, mailing lists, matrix rooms, etc. Um, and I'm not so much going to focus on the growing kudos. Um, I think we're all doing a pretty good job, so keep up with that. Um, and if, you're, if you feel like we're not, um, talk to the community working group. And the main topic is going to be on the communication aspect of, of management and organization. How do we communicate with uh, contributors? There are three types of communication identified, again, from the book, The Art of Community. Um, there's incoming communication. That is how KDE receives information from the world, bug reports, surveys, etc. Outgoing, how KDE shares information with the world, so promo, social media, and these kinds of things. And then you have internal communication, how KDE contributors exchange information among contributors. 
So question to you, that's gonna be the focus today. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Um, so, so the kinds of the, the who, where, what, uh, why, and how of exchanging information, um, this would include things like where um, to talk with other contributors, what needs to be done, who is working on it, how to get started, where to share, share one's work, et cetera. And so then the question to you, where do KDE contributors exchange information? Invent, it's a central place. Matrix, Academy, yep. Mailing lists, sprints. Bugzilla, mm -hmm. wikis, discuss, exactly. So I think you guys have hit um, all the main ones that I have here. Um, so websites and blogs um, are also a place. Planet KDE is a place where contributors get information about what's happening in KDE. Um, uh, wikis, uh, community tech-based user base, forum, now it's discuss, um, GitLab, uh, mailing lists, chat, and conferences, um, and sprints, great. So. This is a, a subjective question. So KDE's internal communication channels. So are they like this? This is an on-ramp in uh, Malaysia um, where you have several on-ramps going in one direction. Or are they like this, where you have several on-ramps um, going in many different directions? What do you think? There is no right answer here. Is it the first one? Good. And is it the second one? Who thinks? Uh, it's on, right, thanks. So even though many people come from, in, from many different, uh, uh, if they're going to end up contributing, they're going to end up on event anyway. So that's where they're all going to end up. So it may take a long while, or some people may leave before going on that, but then they wouldn't contribute anyway. But they're going to end up on event, which is where everybody ends up. So if you look at the end point, then maybe there's something to say uh, that, that it does look like this. Um, but if you look at that whole on-ramping process, Maybe it's not quite like this. Um, someone else wants to um, add something. I don't know if, if, can we pass around the mic or, yeah? Uh, I think it's more like the second uh, picture because there's various points of entries, but there's also various quote unquote destinations because we're not just all developers and we've worked really hard over the past to get away from this notion, oh, you have to write code to contribute to KDE, but there's lots of people that do documentation, that, that do wiki or promo and social media, so uh, I think not everyone ends up on invent, so I think the second picture is, is much more accurate. Yeah, so, so depending on the perspective you have of, of how we should be organized, if you, if you see all these different things as being different sort of uh, paths, then maybe this is um, a more accurate description, and maybe it's the preferred one. Um, it may also be it's not the preferred one, and it's just how it is because it made sense at some time, and it sort of developed this way and remained um, that way. Um, there is no right answer to this question. I'm going to have an, a perspective that I, uh, through the show, don't tell approach, maybe you will come to the conclusion, similar to me, that it looks more like this, um, this more chaotic one. And I think we could make it look a little bit more like this, at least in terms of the on-ramping process. Um, so I'm going to try to focus on what I think are some um, pretty low-hanging fruit. Um, that might be inaccurate, but I think it's pretty low-hanging. And I, it's totally fine if you disagree with me. That's great. That means we're having a conversation about it. Okay, so yeah, my goal here is to get KDE contributors on the same path, all heading the same direction, no matter which team they're a part of. And if there's sort of two key words, um, which this is a little bit forced, I was trying to find what are the, like, the, the overarching themes and how can I reduce it to something that people can really take away. And I, I came up with consistency and discoverability across and within internal communication channels. And I think this will lower barriers in on-ramping and put KDE contributors on a clear path forward so we get to something like this. Um, if you have opinions and want to share them, please, please come to the two boffs that are related to this, internal communications and on-ramping on Tuesday at 12, and uh, wiki improvements at 3. Okay, so this one is an easy one. I thought I'd start easy, and then, oh, it doesn't really get that hard, but, but we'll start easy. Um, so three parts, wikis, international groups, and blogs are going to be the topic here, and then at the boff we can talk about other things. So wikis. Um, how many wikis does KDE have? Yeah, so this one's easy. You guys already know. Three, right? So we have three wikis. Uh, user base, tech base, and community. Um, they all have different um, objectives, uh, different uh, demographics that are targeted. Um, user base is user documentation. Tech base is more the, 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 the um, uh, developers, and community is more community-oriented. Um, so one thing I found out recently is that user base 
is in some sense a workaround at this point because the official documentation process is quite difficult to contribute to. Um, I think it's worth pointing that out. Um, tech base, actually most info now is at develop.kd.org slash docs from what I've found out. Um, and the community one um, is, is still active. Um, so, so then again, another sort of easy one perhaps given the information I just said, how many wikis are planned at least internally to be retired? So I heard a couple of ones and one two. That's a confusing sentence, but um, the correct answer is two. So at least internally, user base and tech base are planned to be retired. Um, as I mentioned, um, uh, user base is kind of a workaround, and that's why it's uh, sort of uh, yeah, lingering on. Um, tech base is kind of a zombie wiki at this point. Um, but how many wikis are listed on kd.org? Three, right? So if you go to the bottom panel, you get all three. Um, this is a suboptimal experience if you're a new user coming into KDE and landing on zombie wikis, wikis that are just kind of stumbling on um, but not really uh, uh, active. Um, which of these recent opinions, paraphrased, um, from seasoned KDE contributors about the wikis are real? Today I discovered really useful documentation on user base I had never encountered before. User base is an impressive repo. I wonder why it's not seen attention in recent years. I find KDE wiki websites rather difficult and confusing to use, so I just avoid them mostly. All of them. All of these are recent comments uh, from KD contributors about the wikis. Okay, so to sum up um, some of the problems that I think uh, we're facing right now. So user base and tech base are in a kind of wiki purgatory. Um, you know, they're not quite where they should be. Um, both are internally planned to be retired, but yet featured on the main website. And then the question, how many users are informed about this? How many contributors? Um, I just learned this recently. Um, I wonder how many of you, how many of you either just learned it right now? Yeah, so that's not a good thing, right? Um, how many of you already knew this but learned it recently? Yeah, so, so yeah, so this is something I think when we think about how, when we go back to that image of the, of the on-ramping, we're thinking about new contributors going from that external category into the internal one, um, what that user experience is like um, when they encounter this kind of thing, right? They're coming across all this, these wikis, these uh, great sources of information, but finding out they're not actually active and plan to be retired, or maybe um, yeah, they're, they're, they're not up to date. Um, um, there's a lack of attention and outdated information in them. And I would say that there's a lack of discoverability in general. Going to that comment about um, difficult and confusing to use, um, the pages are all structured, at least in community, which is the one I'm most familiar with. They're all structured in slightly different ways. Um, it's not necessarily easy to orient yourself to know where you are in the wiki and what other related pages might be. Um, it's my opinion, um, perhaps you have a different opinion, come to the BOF on Tuesday um, or uh, raise uh, some points here in the conversation. And I would say this leads to an overall suboptimal user experience and confusion, and that then leads to avoidance, right? Which means we have these great resources, you know, we have uh, uh, impressive repos and uh, really useful documentation that maybe people aren't getting. And that's going to influence then the on-ramping where you get the developing the skill, skill sets aspect of uh, contributing to KDE. Okay, how am I doing time-wise? So I'm definitely going to be a little early on the, on the, but that's good, then we can talk about it. Um, so some of my proposals, at least um, in the short term, maybe D-Link or unlink user base and tech base from the main site. If they're, if they're internally planned to be um, discontinued, maybe we should stop driving traffic there from people who don't know that. Um, inform users of, of coming retirement. Um, it, when we're at that stage, maybe we're not there yet. Maybe I'm, I'm uh, jumping the shark a bit. But, but, but when, we're, when we are there, I think we should do this because I think this is leading to some confusion. I think we should add some discoverability features to our wikis. Some of it's really easy. Like, if you go to a Wikipedia page, at the end of the, the page, you get a very um, clear see also and external links, right? We can add this to our wiki pages, so it makes it easy for people to follow up on related topics um, or external information um, about it. Maybe it's worth um, adding things like um, high-level wiki categories, something that people can kind of clip through to navigate through the wiki so that the information is discoverable. Um, so if you don't know where you want to go, you might discover the information that you do want or need. Um, Another idea is use consistent information structure. Um, again, Wikipedia as an example, they have a pretty clear structure of a short summary and then a table of contents and then um, a, a pretty consistent structure. Perhaps we can think about a template to apply to our wiki so that users can quickly and easily find information when they arrive at a page. They don't have to read a wall of text before they get to what they need um, from it. Um, and, then, and then, yeah, this is easier said than done, but maybe we need to make official documentation easier to contribute to um, so that we can move away from this 
um, sort of yeah, lingering uh, wiki that's there as a workaround so we can actually get to what we want, which is a documentation process that's easy for contributors to contribute to. And again, Wikiboth, if you're interested in the topic and want to talk about it. Okay, um, websites, um, and focusing here on international sites and local groups. So how many languages is the KDE.org webpage uh, translated into? 17, 39, or 52? Who thinks it's 17? I see a couple of hands. Who thinks it's 39? I see a few more hands. Who thinks it's 52? Uh, again, a couple of hands. So the correct answer is 39. Right? That's impressive. That's, that's amazing work done by our translation teams. That I don't know. This is a very simple statistic, just looking at the number of languages in the dropdown. So I could have looked uh, a little bit more deeply, but I didn't at this point. Um, but that's a good question. Okay, so that's translations, right? And that's slightly different than local community websites. Um, those are websites targeting uh, local communities related to KDE. How many local community websites are listed at KDE.org? Um, eight, 17, or 39? Who thinks it's eight? Who thinks it's 17? Who thinks it's 39? Okay, so most hands are at eight, which is the correct answer. So at the KDE.org website, there is on the bottom panel a link to international websites. It looks like this. Um, and here you have uh, eight different uh, yeah, local communities, Brazil, China, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Russia, Spain, and Turkey. Okay, so given that we have these eight local communities websites linked on the website um, and to the kd.org website, um, how many official ways are there to connect for local international communities at KDE? And what I mean by that is how do they communicate with each other? How do they get information about their communities? How many different ways are there for those local communities to be engaged with KDE? So we saw websites, um, so that's clearly one. Um, how many other ones are there? So I'm thinking here like mailing lists, et cetera. Two, who thinks there are two other ways, or two ways in total? So four, uh, yeah, four or five. So the correct answer is five. Um, and these are websites, as just pointed out. Um, discourse, um, which is a new one. So if you said four, maybe you didn't have that in your list of ways for local communities to communicate. Mailing lists, there are many local community mailing lists. Um, uh, chat rooms, there are many on the Matrix, uh, and probably, uh, and Telegram I know is a big one. Um, and uh, uh, the KDE networks. Um, I included this in there. This is a part of a, an outreach program in which they're sort of connecting different local communities. So yeah, websites we just saw. Here's the forum, um, discuss. You have uh, yeah, Germany, Finland, Italy, France, uh, Spain, India, Brazil. Um, and I don't speak um, the languages, um, but I'm guessing Chinese and China and Japan. Um, here are the official mailing lists um, uh, listed at the um, website. I put in here some information about when the last post was. Um, and I, what I write there, last post, I don't mean the mailing the post that I sent around identifying inactive or low frequency mailing lists. Um, so that's not included in the last post. Um, so here we have um, uh, 16 different mailing lists for different groups. Um, many of which have not seen much, you know, low frequency activity, which is fine, um, as was discussed in the discussion about this. Um, sometimes some communities don't need high frequency to be active. Um, that totally makes sense. And mailing lists are actually a good place to have that kind of low frequency activity. They're not very intrusive. Um, they don't require much from the user. You just receive information when there is information. But anyway, just to point out that there is sort of a low activity um, in some of them. Um, here's the list of matrix and chat rooms. We have um, Russia, Brazil, Japan, Netherlands, Belgium, Iran, Portugal, China, Italia, Germany, Greece, Argentina, Spain, um, and then a Spanish-speaking users, uh, Latin America, America, France, and French-speaking users' um, uh, um, uh, chat rooms. Yep, yep. Uh, some of those, including those on your previous slides, uh, some look slightly different. Uh, for example, uh, some of them could be uh, local organizational tools, and others could be like user support in language, uh, which, uh, at least from the names, it is not fully clear if it is a local organizational tool or it is a user support in. It's, it's a very good point. I, I just want to point out I tried to leave out here the internationalization websites and chat rooms. This is all sort of uh, local or language focused groups, and they might have slightly different purposes. Some might be local communities, some might be language oriented. Um, so it's definitely a good point, and you see that here with Spain and Spanish speaking uh, users, et cetera. Um, so there might be some uh, different use cases. Um, I would still say they're all sort of related to these local communities and international groups related to KDE. And if that's not clear, and I don't have off the top of my head information about each one of these websites, but I do have some examples, it's not necessarily communicated clearly at the, with, at the information at the mailing lists or the matrix rooms. And I'm gonna give some examples of that in just a second. 
And then here's the KDE networks, um, which uh, include uh, five different um, uh, uh, countries. Okay. So one of the things I want to point out here is I just showed all these different um, international groups and language-oriented groups, and I just want to, one of the questions is, are these various ways to connect, are they aligned, right? Do, if you land on one, do you know about the others? Um, and I'm just going to give some examples of what I found, and this comes across as critical, but I mean it with love, because I think we can improve this, right? So the KD Espana website, if you look under the communication, it links to the old forum, um, has its own mailing lists, which are not the mailing lists that you find at kde.org um, under the mailing lists listed there. And there's no mention of the above mailing lists, chat rooms, or discuss.kde.org community. Um, if you go to the Spanish uh, local community at Discuss, there's no mention of the, either the KDE Espana website or other communication channels. So if you're at one, you don't necessarily know the others exist. Right? Um, KDE Networks Brazil page, it links to the Matrix and Telegram uh, chat rooms, um, and no other communication channels or, or websites are mentioned. Um, the Matrix room links to the Brazil International site, and the Brazil uh, website um, has, again, the Telegram groups and mailing lists. Um, uh, and there's no mention of the Discuss group or KDE Networks group. So again, you have these, this misalignment between information about how to communicate. Um, if you go to the Brazil uh, forum at, at, at the um, forum, um, there's no information provided about any of these other groups. Okay? Um, and then the Greek one, um, there's no description provided in the mailing list. Um, there's no mention of the matrix room and vice versa. Right? So if you land on one, you might not know about the other. You have a fracturing of the community, people communicating, not knowing that there's communication happening elsewhere. So information is scattered. Um, you have unmaintained websites, um, outdated information. I'm going to look at that in just a second, some examples of that. Um, perhaps this is having these international websites separate from the translation of the kd.org website. Maybe this is an inefficient use of possible translation teams, right? Maybe some of these teams actually would be better used in translating the main website and local communities um, could be uh, somewhere else. Um, websites are hard to maintain, right? Um, some pl platforms have infrequent or no activity, um, and I think this inconsistency and lack of discoverability make for confusion and a suboptimal experience. Um, and I think one thing we could think about, and this is something to talk about at the BOF, we can define consistent processes to funnel contributors into KDE. I use the example here of these international groups. How do we want people to go from that landing page into KDE? And can we align it across the different channels, right? So we end up with those different on-ramps all going in the same direction. Let's make information consistent, right? Let's communicate which platforms are used for which purposes at all platforms and perhaps indicate the frequency of activity to manage expectations. If you know that a mailing list is low frequency and you sign up for it, you're not going to then be disappointed if you don't get much information, and it might help to know that perhaps the, the, dis the forum is more active, and that's where you actually want to engage. Um, for local groups, maybe use low barrier platforms. You know, mailing lists are, uh, websites are hard to maintain. Perhaps things like a mailing list or, or a forum is more appropriate instead of having a dedicated website. It's an opinion. People might disagree. Um, and again, maybe internationalization can be taken care of at kd.org with the translation teams. If you have opinions about this, join the internal communications boss. Um, and I just wanted to point out that I came across the kd.in website doesn't seem to work. So maybe this can be retired if it's not being maintained. Um, and the Peru group seems to be offline as well. So maybe just two things I came across in my um, uh, yeah, searching through the different websites. And then finally, and I hope this takes just a couple of minutes, um, the blogs. Um, how many blogs, official KDE blogs, are linked to at kde.org? One, two, or three? OK, most hands were at two, which is the correct answer, at least as far as I can tell. We have two, um, dot, and planet. Um, dot is referred to as KDE News, um, which is not actually a link. Um, um, just to point out, so those are the ones linked to at the main website. Um, Planet is actually an aggregator, as you all know. It has 762, when I checked, um, feed URL, URL links. Um, and there are many uh, subgroups that are targeting different blogs, um, some of which are part of Planet. Um, or I think all of them are part of Planet. Um, there's a develop, developer-specific legacy aggregate at blogs.kde.org. Um, which is no longer used, as far as I understand. There are project-specific blogs. You have blog.neon.kd.org, as well as eco.kd.org slash blog, um, as well as gcompre has their own blog. And then you have language-specific blogs. kdblog.com, I believe, is Spanish, if I remember correctly. So some problems um, that I'm identifying when thinking about this. Um, I think there's not a problem having different blogs for different purposes. One thing I think is confusing is having one referent but two names. So you have something called dot, and you have as well something linked to called kd.news. 
um, which is inconsistent and perhaps confusing. I know it was confusing for me. Um, and apparently I'm not the only one because we sent around a survey recently and this is one of the comments was let's rename dot to kde.news or something similar, um, which I have to say I agree with. That makes it much more transparent about what the content is. Um, dot is not a very transparent name, um, especially if you're coming from that outsider to the insider um, um, uh, category. Um, group specific blogs, I didn't find any sort of clear list where you can say, okay, if I'm interested in this one subset of blogs, this is where I can go. Um, and the community wiki only had sparse information about the different sort of blog groups. Um, this was me sort of searching for blogs. I had to really actively find them. Um, this was not necessarily an easy process. So some proposals, use transparent names and be consistent to help with recognizability. Um, contributors should easily know where to find info about the activity at KDE. This should be one of the like basic, really most basic things. We should all know what's happening um, in the most easy way possible. It's not necessarily easy, but we can make it easier. Um, and I think we should support more blog discoverability. Um, if we have all these sub blogs or if we have sub blogs, we should maybe make it so that it's linked to somewhere so people know I'm interested in this particular subset of activity. Um, and it can be like a blog role at Planet, right, that just says if you're interested in these, click here and like, it takes you to a, maybe a specific specific subset of blogs. Again, if you have any opinions about this, uh, join the boss. Um, and I'm just going to show as a last thing just an example of what I think this is imaginary, but what, what could be three different on-ramping paths if you're um, in um, landing on one of these international websites. I'm going to pick on KDE Italia a little bit because I kind of, kind of belong to that group, so I feel okay doing that. Um, um, so the KDE Italia, they actually have their own dedicated website um, separate from the KDE.org um, called kdeitalia.it, I believe. Um, this is uh, where you land if you go to that website. Um, and uh, you see here immediately that the website is last updated in 2016 according to the website. Um, it does seem that they have automated um, updates coming in in one section of it, but the actual official website updates. So if you're a user and this is where you first land, um, maybe it's not so great that it's you know now uh, nine years ago that it was last officially updated. Um, and also you have some links to different communities um, that you can get involved with. The thing is, if you click on it, um, this is where you land for the first one, the forum. Um, you can search around and find the forum, um, but it's the old forum, and first, yeah, your first impression is going to be, okay, this isn't taking me anywhere. Um, if you look around, you'll then land on the uh, KD Italia um, forum at the old forum, which has been archived. Um, okay, so that's one, one path if you land on the KD Italia website. If you go to the kd.org website and select Italian as your language, you're going to get more up-to-date information. And you might click on that top panel, um, uh, Participa, so you're going to participate in the community. And now you land at the wiki, uh, which is great. This is a lot of really good information um, with a nice table of contents. And if you go there, you're going to find out that there is a matrix in the mailing list, which is great. So this, is, this looks actually um, pretty up-to-date. Um, the only problem is here, there's also now a community in discourse which is not listed here. This is something we can change, low-hanging fruit, not a big deal. Um, so path three is you land in discourse and you say, oh, there's a community of KDE contributors related to Italy. Um, however, if you go there, um, it doesn't tell you any of the information about uh, any other of the communication channels, which includes um, the mailing list and the matrix room. So these are just, again, I'm reiterating the same point from before. We can align this information. Um, maybe we can archive things that are no longer useful to us and maybe some making a suboptimal user experience for going from that stage from I want to contribute to I'm now contributing. Um, so yeah, so on-ramping paths are inconsistent, information is out of date or incomplete, and there's a lack of discoverability of the other channels. Um, and if you have proposals, we can discuss in the remaining time or join the proposal. Um, I wanted to leave it as an open question. And um, I just want to point out there's one other um, related, very related um, topic right now being discussed in Fabricator. Um, just the idea of formalizing a process for adding or removing services and platforms to KD's infrastructure. I think one of the things that I, I, my sense is when looking at the sort of big picture is there is a proliferation of uh, platforms, services, et cetera, which may all make sense at a certain point in time. Um, they might not, um, and we should have a process for evaluating that. Do we want to add more to what we already have? And then how do we archive and remove it when it's no longer needed? So it doesn't remain there as sort of a zombie site where it's um, creating a, a, a suboptimal experience for people who want to get involved with KDE. So there is this proposal. I don't know now if it's open to the public, but um, be in touch if you're interested in, in discussing that more. Um, and I want to... I, so my feeling, as I said at the beginning, is um, uh, I think right now we're more like this, and I would like to see it end up more like this, where we're all sort of on-ramping and then going in the same direction. 
And I'm going to leave it at that, join the boffs, and we have plenty of time for conversation. And I want to point out the conversation now, I'm happy to answer questions that maybe I can answer, but actually I think you all probably have more information than I do. So this should be a community conversation. It shouldn't be oriented to me. So thank you. So questions. Yeah, thanks, Joseph. Um, so we have one minute for questions. So. Otherwise, there are the boffs, of course. Go there. Thank you for talking about this topic. Uh, I want to ask you about what you think will be the result of getting to that model over there. Um, I, one thing that I personally notice in the community is that a lot of longstanding contributors seem to suffer from an extreme form of email overload where it becomes impossible to, um, to keep track of everything. So my observation there is that email often ends up as the single endpoint of information. So if we succeed at centralizing all these things in some form, maybe it's email, maybe it's something else, uh, do you think that there's a risk that the result is just a huge form of information overload and nobody can keep track of everything just because there's too much? Um, so my position here is actually not that we need to centralize all services to one, like we all need to end, end up on email. Um, my, my main point here is we need alignment across the platforms so that if you are active on email, you know that those other channels are active, so you can be engaged in different places. Um, and um, there needs to be a way to discover that information, um, and we need some consistency. So, so it's not so much saying we need to centralize all into one. Um, that said, I do think sometimes less is more. Um, so maybe if we need to find um, a, a places where we uh, centralize or at least um, deproliferate, maybe is another way to put it, so we're all sort of more into certain channels, um, information overload certainly can be a problem. I mean, I, I know I experienced that already um, at times in the KDE mailing list. Um, and that's where, yeah, I think having the right platform for the right group with information about like frequency of activity, what kind of information is supposed to be posted there, so you are in the place that you should be and not getting information that's not relevant for what you want, um, and then you know that there are other channels if you want other types of information, I think can help um, reduce that as long as it's clear where to go to get which information. So yeah, I don't want to say we all need to end up on email or we all need to be on Discuss. That's really not what I want to say here. Um, if we have these different, which they might serve different purposes, if we have these different platforms, we need to be able to know where where the other platforms are, what kinds of conversations are happening there, so that we can then be where we need to be to get the information that we need. So it's kind of a half answer to your, do we have time? Sorry, maybe I went surprised that it took that long. I guess we don't oh, have sorry, time. Sorry, time's up. Then please come to the boss. Thank you.